Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. Whoa, it seems like Celnex is buying up every tower across Europe. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how M&A between two carriers led to more deals for a tower company called Celnex, why a carrier would partner with a tower company, and the rationale for Celnex entry into a new market, being Poland. You might actually be able to make some money off of Celnex's tower roll-up strategy because the company is publicly traded, so stay tuned and I will break this all down for you. Before I do, be sure to subscribe to the DGTL Infra channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss my next in-depth video that is coming out soon. Now, let's jump into the video. Okay, so quick background on the three parties involved in this transaction. This is quite a unique transaction with two steps. First, Iliad, a carrier which operates in France and Italy, is acquiring Play, another carrier which operates in Poland. Then, as a second step, Iliad is selling off a majority interest in Play's digital infrastructure, specifically their tower assets, to Celnex, which is a tower company and digital infrastructure owner. We will focus mainly on the digital infrastructure portion of the transaction, which involves Celnex buying Play's tower assets by partnering with Iliad. However, it is important to understand how Celnex secured this tower carve-out opportunity by partnering with a like-minded partner in Iliad. So Iliad is the third largest carrier in France, operating under the brand Free. It has 19.7 million subscribers in France, including 6.3 million broadband subscribers and 13.4 million mobile subscribers. Additionally, Iliad is the fourth largest carrier in Italy with 6.3 million mobile subscribers, representing an 8% market share. Play, the other carrier involved in this transaction, is the largest carrier in the Polish market, with a 29% market share, 15 million subscribers, and revenue of 1.6 billion euros as of the last 12 months. As you can see on this page, the combined Iliad and Play would have 34.7 million mobile subscribers positioning the company as the sixth largest European carrier, ahead of BT Group, which was formerly known as British Telecom, but behind the likes of Vodafone, Deutsche Telekom, Telefonica, Orange, and 3UK. So first, let's frame out how the Iliad and Play transaction came together. So Iliad launched a takeover bid for Play on September 21st, at a price of PLN 39 per share, which is Polish Zloty, which translates into a price for 100% of the company of 2.2 billion euros, or 3.5 billion euros, including debt. The Iliad and Play transaction is expected to close by November 25th. Earlier in September, prior to announcing the transaction, Iliad signed a binding agreement to purchase a 40% controlling interest from Play's two key shareholders, Kenborn Invest and Tollerton Investments, for the same PLN 39 per share, which is Polish Slotties. And this gives Iliad the majority of seats on Play's board of directors. Iliad has since launched a public bid for the remaining 60% of Play shares at the same price. On October 14th, Reuters reported that the European Commission would grant the Iliad and Play deal approval from an antitrust clearance perspective. This forthcoming European Commission approval paved the way for Celnex to proceed with its portion of the transaction, which was to carve out Play's tower assets in partnership with Iliad. So with that European Commission approval in mind, let's move on to the Celnex portion of the transaction. First, let's start with an overview of what Celnex is. So Celnex Telecom is the largest independent tower company in Europe, operating 60,900 towers across Europe, including the United Kingdom, France, Spain, Italy, Portugal, Switzerland, the Netherlands, and Ireland. Celnex is listed on the Spanish Stock Exchange under the ticker CLNX and is part of the IBEX 35 and Eurostox 600 indices. 
In terms of the transaction, Celnex reached an agreement with Iliad to acquire the network of 7,000 Play Tower sites, and we'll refer to this as Play Tower Co. from here on, which are all in Poland, and the transaction is expected to close by Q2 2021. Play's 7,000 tower sites in Poland have a tenancy ratio of 1.1 times, which means that there are 7,700 tenants with equipment on their towers. And these towers in total generate 120 million euros of EBITDA annually. So now let's dive into some of the transaction terms and a summary of the key metrics. So Celnex will invest 804 million euros to acquire a 60% controlling stake in the company that will manage the tower sites. The remaining 40% will continue to be owned by Play and its new owner Iliad after it closes on its portion of the transaction. Celnex will finance the 60% stake purchase with cash on hand from its recently completed capital raise in July 2020 where the company raised 4 billion euros of capital, allowing it to pursue 11 billion euros of new opportunities for Tower M&A. So what Celnex is doing is they are pre-raising the capital with a pipeline of M&A opportunities, such as this one, and then they are going ahead and executing on that with the cash on hand so there's no risk of financing the transaction once they are speaking to potential targets that they want to acquire. The structure here is similar to a transaction that Celnex and Iliad previously did together in May 2019 for the sites formerly operated by Iliad's free brand in France. So they are replicating a partnership which they already have a blueprint for, which is to acquire certain tower sites outright and then build on additional sites for that carrier in those specific markets. As part of the acquisition for the 7,000 tower sites, Celnex signed an inflation-linked master service agreement with Play as the anchor tenant, with an initial term of 20 years to be automatically extended for subsequent 10-year periods. So that's an example of what we talk about a lot here at DGTL Infra, where the term of the lease is 20 plus years, which is very secure and is backed by the credit of a large carrier like Iliad, which enhances the security of the income stream. And to put this all simplistically, this is effectively a sale and leaseback transaction where you see this a lot in real estate, where instead of a building being sold and leased back, you have the tower assets, which are sold by Iliad and leased back by Iliad. So they get the proceeds up front and they have a recurring payment going forward for the next 20 plus years. Once both the initial acquisition and the rollout of the new sites have been completed, EBITDA for the Play Tower Co. will increase from the 120 million euros of EBITDA mentioned to 220 million euros of EBITDA, while recurring leveraged free cash flow, also known as RLFCF, will be 160 million euros. After the transaction is closed, Celnex will have 73,000 tower sites in nine countries and its backlog of contracted sales will increase by 6 billion euros to 53 billion euros. So Celnex will operate in Spain, Italy, the Netherlands, France, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, Ireland, Portugal, and now Poland. So now let's look at all of these numbers in the context of the transaction's valuation. Celnex is paying 804 million euros to acquire a 60% stake in the 7,000 Play Tower sites, meaning the value for 100% of the Play Tower Co. is 1.3 billion euros. After including the 1.3 billion euro investment required for the Build to Suit program, also known as BTS, for the 5,000 new tower sites, the total enterprise value for the Play transaction equates to 2.6 billion euros. So the key valuation metrics for the transaction are as follows. Year 1 EBITDA of 120 million euros equates to a multiple of 11.2 times EBITDA. Run rate EBITDA of 220 million euros, which includes the Build to Suit program, equates to a multiple of 11.9 times EBITDA. Recurring leveraged free cash flow of 160 million euros equates to a free cash flow yield of 6%. And the enterprise value per tower including the Build to Suit program, 
equates to 219,000 euros per tower. So one of the most unique portions of this transaction is it poses the question as to why a carrier like Iliad would partner with a tower company like Selmex on this transaction. Why would Iliad sell off its towers and why not just keep them? And this transaction also highlights the difference between active infrastructure and passive infrastructure, which we'll explain through this page. So tower sites operated by a tower company, think Selmex, tend to be macro sites, which are large physical towers independent of any building and house what are known as macro cells to broadcast the signals to your mobile device. So that tower company, Selmex, typically has ownership of the physical infrastructure of the tower site, including the land and any ground leases associated with it, the physical tower structure, excluding the electronics and cabling, the on-site shelters for equipment such as baseband, and the provision of energy access to the sites, including any backup generators for fail-safe operations. Whereas the telco, Iliad in this example, will lease space at the site to place its electronic equipment, think about antennas and baseband, and this will include a contract for power to the site. The tower company Selmex leases space on these towers to carriers like Iliad through long-term agreements for hosting their equipment. The site rental is typically comprised of providing carriers like Iliad, which are tenants, vertical space on a tower to place their equipment, and also portions of the land underneath the tower to put their equipment. In this structure, Selmex, the tower company, takes care of what is called the passive infrastructure, what you see as dark blue on the page, which is its component of the value chain. While Iliad, the carrier, owns and manages the active infrastructure, which you see as the pink portions of the page. So let's walk through a couple items that distinguish the active infrastructure from the passive infrastructure on the tower. Active infrastructure owned by the carrier is signified by the pink color on this page and includes label numbers one to four depicted on the tower, which are the tower antenna. Label number five, which is marked on the tower, is the radio link or transport for the tower. Label number six on the tower is the feeder or coaxial cable. So all numbers one through six are active infrastructure owned by the carrier. Now let's move to the bottom half of the page. The passive infrastructure owned by the tower company is signified by the dark blue color on this page and includes labels number seven, which is marked on the tower as the mast, label number eight, which is marked on the tower, which are the shelters, label number nine, which is marked on the tower as the generators, and finally, label number 10, which is the land or the ground below the tower. All of this is passive infrastructure, which is owned by the tower company. So now with that framework in mind, if we think of the rationale for Iliad, the carrier, to sell off the majority of the towers from play to Selnex, it starts to become clear. So Iliad is benefiting by having Selnex acquire Play Tower Co. in a multitude of ways. First of which is to reduce the purchase price that Iliad is having to pay for the entirety of play by having Selnex carve out 60% of the tower assets from the company and pay that consideration of 804 million euros. Further, Iliad is also benefiting from a business perspective with Selnex's subsequent investments into the Play Tower Co. that will strengthen the investment capacity of play in areas such as upcoming purchases of 5G spectrum at auctions. For example, Poland is auctioning a 3.4 gigahertz to 3.8 gigahertz mid-band spectrum for 5G in Q1 2021. Additionally, the need to densify sites, given Play's total site count of 8,300 towers, which the 7,000 that Selnex is purchasing is a part of, is below that of peers, T-Mobile and Orange, who combined have 13,000 towers through their joint venture called Networks, which we'll discuss on the following page. And then finally, Play's planned entry into the fixed broadband market also will require investment. So in summary on that point, Iliad the carrier is able to focus on all these other capital needs or business initiatives to spend or invest their money, 
and doesn't have to worry about upgrading and building new towers because Cellnex, the infrastructure tower company, will be spending money to do that. So this transaction essentially reduces the constraints around Iliad's growth. So now I want to provide you a quick background of the Poland tower market and why it's a potentially attractive opportunity for Cellnex going forward. So Poland is one of the most important countries and economies in Eastern Europe with 38 million people and the GDP for Poland in relative terms has outperformed the European Union as a whole since 2007. Overall, Poland has 22,000 towers underpinning its mobile network, with key carriers in Poland being Orange, Play, branded as P4, Plus, and T-Mobile. Poland's four-carrier market is considered balanced from a market share standpoint, which makes the Polish market competitive for the carriers and attractive to tower companies like Selnex. In terms of other tower companies and joint venture infrastructure companies existing in Poland today, it's limited to really Networks, which is owned by T-Mobile and Orange, who share passive and active infrastructure in Poland through 13,000 towers in a 50%, 50% joint venture network sharing arrangement. But aside from this network's joint venture, there are really insignificant amounts of tower sharing that exist in Poland, despite the country's considerable 121,000 square mile landmass. The only other notable tower company, and it is quite small, is called Emetel, which is owned by a infrastructure fund called Alinda Capital Partners and comprises 377 tower sites, which are primarily for more broadcast purposes as opposed to cellular services. It's also worth noting that. In Poland, American Tower, another company we cover at DGTL Infra, entered Poland just recently in June of 2020. And as of its Q2 2020 earnings report, had 19 towers in the country with an agreement to acquire an additional 31 towers in Poland in the future. So very small entry presence for American Tower, particularly as it relates to Selnex and American Tower's overall size but it shows that other players are viewing Poland as an attractive market for the future. So why is Poland attractive for tower companies in general? Well, first, Poland has more subscribers per tower than the majority of other countries in Europe, which implies that the demand for more towers will be greater in the future. And this means that more towers will need to be built, which is one reason why we see Selnex having an agreement for a build to suit program with Iliad going forward. And then second, the extent of tower site decommissioning that has already taken place in the country reduces the potential churn for tower companies like Selnex going forward. Further opportunities for tower companies exist in Poland from 5G, which will benefit particularly tower co-location, meaning more tenants on every tower and thus more revenue for the tower company. So Poland's four carriers all plan to roll out 5G services in the near future. And the operating environment for towers in Poland is improving, with an increasingly supportive government advocating for 5G rollouts and easing radio frequency emission limits as well. Further, there's a growing need for fixed wireless access, which is also known as FWA. This is a particularly relevant use case for 5G and specifically relevant in rural areas. And it's basically the broadcasting of internet service for your home wirelessly as opposed to connecting fiber or coaxial cable directly to the home in a physical manner. Finally, let's highlight the Poland opportunity specifically for Selnex, and that is with the purchase of this Play Tower Co, Selnex will gain approximately 30% market share in Poland, which is a new market for the company to continue its growth. And further, Selnex is already seeking additional opportunities to gain scale in the country through more acquisitions. So for example, on October 1st, Reuters reported that Polish Carrier Plus, through its Polcomtel infrastructure unit, had put its 8,000 towers up for sale for between 1 billion euros and 1.3 billion euros. Therefore, Selnex could announce an accretive bolt-on tower company transaction in the near future. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, then please share it with somebody you think might also find it helpful. And consider subscribing to DGTL Infra and visit us at dgtlinfra.com for more of the latest digital infrastructure news. Thank you for watching this video. 
Be sure to like the video and post in the comments telling me whether you think Selnex made the right decision entering the Polish tower market. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.